Hi guys, due to the new framework that's been put in place by UK Active and Sport England and Public Health England, we've decided that we're going to do a virtual induction for our members who are both new and existing. There's a lot of new machines that have been added over the last four months and we want to demonstrate now how to use them safely and what measures we've put in place to keep you protected from those who are training alongside you. So I'd like you to join us now where Ashley and Lewis are going to demonstrate how to use the machines. We'll give you a brief demonstration how to set the machines up for use for the first time and just give you an idea of which muscles that each independent machine is going to work. We'll go through each and every machine. For the purpose of this video, we will demonstrate on the first machine how to clean down before and after use using the equipment that we will provide. There's various sanitization products which are located around different points of the gym. We expect you to clean them down before and after use. You'll also see the team go around the gym on a daily basis each and every hour to clean down and sanitize the machines, but we do expect members to adhere to the rules as well. The rules can be seen as you enter the gym as well as sanitization units around the gym we expect you to use. On that note guys, let's not waste any more time. Let's get you started and let's welcome you back into Mass Body Gym, the gym based here in Teesside with myself, Lewis and Ashley. Let's go. Okay guys, so the first machine that we're going to show you is probably one of the most brutal machines in, in any gym. It's a really high-end piece of equipment and it's called the Stairmaster. It basically replicates a revolving staircase and you can change how fast that moves and how hard it is to move. So we're going to get Ashley to come onto the machine now and we're going to show you now how to use this safely and just let you know the process of setting it up. So to get access to this machine, there's little foot plates and that's where you're going to put your feet. So Ashley's going to put her left foot onto there and then her right foot is going to start climbing the stairs. Once she climbs to the top tread, she'll then see the buttons on the keypad in front of her. She'll press the quick start button, which will start the staircase revolving. That starts at level one. You can go to level 10. So I would recommend going up in increments until the staircase starts revolving at a speed that you're comfortable at. Now, you don't have to force that staircase down, it moves with you. So as the staircase moves faster, your feet move faster. And if you feel like it's going a little bit too fast, simply press the minus button and that'll slow the staircase down. Most people will use this for around about 10 minutes, unless you like Ashley, who'd probably go in it for an hour a day. As soon as you want to stop, you simply hit the red button in the middle, which will completely stop the staircase and the brakes will be put on. You now disembark the machine by placing your foot on the pad and stepping off safely. What we're going to do now is we're now going to show you how we expect you to clean the machine down. So all the touch points on the machine is where we need to clean. We're going to spray them with the antiviral disinfectant. So we just expect you to spray down everywhere that your feet and your hands have been located. Once you spray that down, simply take off the blue roll and then use this to wipe down the machine accordingly. You might need to use more than one piece of blue roll, that's absolutely fine. It's up to you to get the machine nice and clean and tidy. And once you've done with it, dispose of the blue roll in the bins provided. And again, just make sure that the machine is completely dry. That makes it safe for the next person who's gonna come and use, use this machine once you've finished. We'll now come through with the next piece of cardio equipment, which is a treadmill. You'll find four of these on the ground floor of the gym. You'll find three of them on the first floor. We'll show you one of the ground floor treadmills. All the setups are just the same. They're just a different brand. This this leads us to the second piece of equipment here on the ground floor of the gym and again you will find these on the first floor as well but this is a treadmill the treadmill does two things it moves up and down and the belt rotates to either allow you to run or to walk we'll just demonstrate now how to use the features on the machine we will use a quick start process which just will get you started when you are cleaning down this machine after use please don't worry about the the treadmill belt just make sure you clean down everywhere where your hands have touched so actually now if you can just step on the treadmill so you've got various different options on the treadmill and various buttons. When you step on the treadmill, you'll see the safety device. It's a magnetic cutoff. You can simply place that onto your clothing and if you were to fall off the treadmill or step back over too far, you'd pull that off and that would emergency stop the machine. When you do get on the machine, you can clip that onto here. If you don't want to use that, then please wrap it safely around the handle and leave it out of use. But we will show you how to use it safely. Clip this on to an item of clothing and then Ashley will simply press the quick start button. Once you press the quick start button, it'll count down and the treadmill belt will start moving. Now what Ashley can do now is set the pace of the treadmill. So we'll go on to a walking pace of around about three. So the treadmill now will stay at three miles an hour. What Ashley can do now, if she wants to make this a little bit harder but not get into a run, she can simply raise the incline. So she'll press the arrow button 
on the up and down section that will raise the incline up so Ashley's now on a level five incline she can walk now or she can go on a run and she's free to use this as she wants there's various different programs which are preset on the treadmills feel free to have a go at them and they'll give you a different workout or you can just walk at your own pace and run at your own pace what she can do is she can now set the treadmill to go back down to zero incline and she can slowly slow down her walk where when she feels comfortable it's just a matter of pressing the stop button she'll press it twice and her workout's ended she'll now replace the safety clip back where she found it and disembark the treadmill safely this is a slightly different treadmill and it's a really really hard workout this is called the incline treadmill which will go to a 30 degree incline most treadmills go around 12 to 15 this one really will make you feel like you're walking up a hill it's a very rare piece of equipment and you don't really see these very often so we are going to demonstrate how to use this now and just how this machine works actually we'll now stand on the treadmill again you've got your safety switch which is on every treadmill which you can find here you can simply click that on your item of clothing we'll leave it off for the purpose of the video but for your safety we do recommend that you do clip onto you it's the same principle as a setup on any treadmill actually will just go ahead and press the quick start once she presses the quick start, the treadmill will start moving. The purpose of this treadmill is to make you feel like you're climbing a mountain or a very, very large hill. So Ashley will now set the speed to this treadmill to around about 2.2, which will get her moving. You've got various handles on this. You've got the handles on the top, which will also take your heart rate. This helps you hold on when you are climbing them really high inclines and gradients. You've also got handles in front of you, which again, you can use depending on the gradient that you're using. And there's various places to put your water bottle. Hydration is really important. So actually now, as options, she can go to a decline or she can go to an incline. I'm gonna show you now just how this goes up to a 30 degree incline, but you can choose from any one of them settings in between, but we'll take it to the maximum. The treadmill's now starting to incline. And it'll go up and it'll take around about 30 seconds to get to a full incline. As you can see now, the treadmill starting to rise and currently we're at about 15 degrees. We've still got another 15 degrees to go. Okay, we're closely now getting to the top of the incline where the treadmill is now going to start making the user, and in this case, actually, really start to, to feel a burn. We recommend you always keep hold when you're using this treadmill for safety reasons, but to make your workout a lot more intense for the advanced user, they could choose to leave go of the treadmill and they could move their arms as the feet are moving as well. The more parts of your body that are moving, the more calories you will burn. This is not something that you can do for a prolonged period of time. You will really start to feel a burn on the back of your legs, particularly on the calf muscles. Again, we would always recommend that you wear the appropriate footwear for a workout. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna set the treadmill to come down and we're gonna safely get Ashley to step backwards off the machine once she's told the machine she no longer wants to exercise. If you do want to stop and you do feel that it's getting too much for you, you can simply pull the red cord. The red cord will just cut the machine dead and that will end the workout. Okay guys, that takes us on to the next piece of cardio equipment which is located on the first floor of our club and it's a cross trainer. The cross trainers are a great piece of equipment to promote mobility. You have two options on this. Your feet will always move but you have two different handles. The handles which can be found in front of you means your arms don't move but the handles on the left can help you move and can create movement in the whole body. So Ashley now will stand onto the cross trainer and get things going. To start this machine, you simply have to start moving. Once you start moving at a pace, the machine will light up. Once the machine recognizes that a user's on it, you simply select to press the go button. So Ashley will now press the go button and in three seconds, her workout will start out. Now she has different levels on this and you can increase them and decrease them based on how hard you wanna work or how new you are to exercising. So if Ashley now removes her hands from the handles which are moving and places on the handles in front of her, she has two buttons. One on the right has a level up and the one on the left has a level down. So Ashley will now put the level up which will put a bit more resistance so it'll make her work that little bit harder. So what she'll do now, she's found the level that she wants to work to, she'll now place her hands on the outside handles and she will move in synchronization the legs with the hands and that will create 
an intense workout. You can move the levels up and down on this machine as much or as little as you want, but once you are finished, you have two options. You can either press the blue button on your left, which is a cool down, which will then give you a five minute cool down and allow you to cool down on a machine and step off safely. Or if you are finished on the machine and you're gonna go on to a different exercise and you don't feel that you need a cool down, simply press the stop button. Once you press the stop button, you then start moving your legs and come to a complete stop. Once you come to a complete stop, you can step backwards off the machine and then move on to the next piece of equipment. The next piece of cardio equipment is something what most of us have probably used at some stage in our life. There's two different types of bikes which you find in the gym environment, a recumbent bike and a seated stationary bike. This one is just a seated stationary bike which basically replicates the bicycle that you'd all ride out on the street. The first thing you do on this machine is set the seat to fit you. Ashley will now place her hip to the side of the machine and she will then pull this lever out. Once she pulls this lever out, she'll put it to the center of the hip. As you can see now, that's at the right height for Ashley, so when she gets on, her legs will get an extension. Once you've done that, you simply tighten up the screw in front of you, which will lock the seat into position. As you can see now, that seat won't move. She can now climb aboard the seat and she can get ready to do a workout. This foot holster's there where your feet go in and it'll lock your feet into the pedal, and then Ashley will then simply start moving her legs like she will any normal bike. Once she starts pedaling, the machine will light up automatically for her and it will prompt it to press the start button. So we have two options on here. The start, which will allow you to choose a program or a quick start where you can adjust the resistance yourself. We'll just use the quick start one for this. And as you can see now, it's started. On this machine, it displays your current heart rate. If you are wearing one of our MyZone belts, it will display the heart rate that your heart rate belt is portraying. If you don't have one on, these points on your hands will get a heart rate from your hands. What we're going to do now is turn the resistance up so that will just make it harder for Ashley to pedal. Imagine you're riding a normal bike and you're climbing a hill and you're changing the gears. This is simply a gear. Different handles again on here so as your workout gets harder you're probably more inclined to lean forward and really start to drive from them glutes to try and drive through to the heels and toes of your feet to promote an intense workout. Again once you've finished on that You'll simply press the stop button, which is located to the left hand side of the keypad. Press the stop button, the machine will tell you that it's stopped, and then you can again disembark from the machine safely. The next piece of cardio equipment is brutal. It's the air bike. Now, it does work in a similar way as a stationary bike that I just showed you in the same principles as pedals but also as handles. You have to really move this machine and it's really difficult and you can get a great hit workout from that. There's a great big massive fan which is located at the front of the machine that as you pedal and move the arms, that will create a cold air that will keep you cool during this workout and trust me, you're gonna need it. Again, the same principles are that you will set the seat height, but not only on that, you can move the seat backwards and forwards on this one so you can get the correct position. I'm now gonna show you how to use the hit bike, otherwise known as the air bike, but first, let's set the height for Ashley. Again, as always on bikes, there's a little adjusting knob there. You'll unscrew it and pull it out. Once you've unscrewed it, you'll pull it out and then we will set that to Ashley, Ashley's hip height. So Ashley's gonna to go to about level four on this. And again, make sure you screw that in nice and tight, which will stop the bike seat going up and down. And then you've also got one on the back, which allows you to move the seat backwards and forwards. And again, on this one, we'll have it on level two for Ashley. She is quite short. She's only around five foot six. So now we'll get Ashley to climb on the machine and show you how to use this machine properly. So. As you can see, as she pedals, these arms move in synchronization with the pedals as well. So she will always have to keep hold of them. What she'll do is she can start putting the pressure through her feet and her hands. And as you can see, this fan now is creating an airflow, which is getting actually nice and cool. On this, you'll simply press start. And this keypad here gives you a lot of information. It tells you how hard you're pedaling, how long you've been pedaling for, what speed you're pedaling at, and what your reps per minute are. Your revolutions per minute is how many times you would turn them pedals each and every minute. So if Ashley now was to start putting a little bit of effort into this, this would get really, really difficult for her. And trust me, a minute on this, you know you're using it. 
If Ashley now wanted to give her legs a break because they were getting too much, she could locate them on the pedals in front and she could just use her arms, which would give her feet a break. Although you wouldn't be able to do this for a prolonged period of time. So once you've finished using this machine, you simply bring the handles to a stop and then you press the stop button twice. This machine is used a lot in the CrossFit games and in intense, high intensity workouts. Lewis would use this a lot with his professional boxers and with the footballers and a lot in personal training sessions. It's a really tough piece of equipment and it really will get your heart rate racing. So please make sure you always have plenty of fluids to hand between your intervals on this machine. The dreaded grappler. This is really, really difficult, but it's a great machine, especially if you're feeling the effects on your legs and you do want to give your legs a bit of a break. This will predominantly use your shoulders and your biceps when you're using this machine. You have to imagine that you're trying to climb a rope with this machine and it does become really difficult. I'll show you two variations of using this machine. One where you're pulling it down and one where you're pushing it up. What we'll do on this is you don't have to adjust your seat. Your seat is set. So Ashley will now just simply sit on the machine and she will now start to move this rope. So you'll take your right hand and pull it down and followed by your left hand. This does create quite a little bit of tension on your hands, so you are gonna probably feel the effects of that. But once you go, you can now see on the screen there the distance that you've done, how many calories you've burnt, and how fast you're going with the machine. So if you simply press the mode button, it will give you the time. So Ashley's been going now for 26 seconds. You can set the resistance on this machine to make it harder or easier. So there's simply a button on here which says load up or load down. So if we set the load up, it's gonna make it more and more difficult for Ashley to pull. So she really is gonna to have to put her back into this. If we put the load back down again, Ashley now can stop using this machine and she could reverse it and she could use the tricep muscle and the shoulder muscle as well. So as you can see now there, she's pulling the rope up, but you're not gonna be able to do this for a prolonged period of time. It's just a variation of how to use it. Another great piece of equipment, something what you can use when your legs are having a break. A lot of people use this when they've got injuries with the legs. They can sit down where there's no pressure on the legs and it's all simply on the shoulders and on their arms. One of the new pieces of equipment to our gym is the curved treadmill. This is self-powered, so there's no plugs, there's no electricity, this is run by your feet. Sounds like it's gonna be easy, but trust me, it really isn't. The treadmill is curved in a way which forces you to keep on moving. If you start running, this machine will run at your pace. This will really, really test you to your limits. There's various pieces of safety devices on this machine and I'll show you now how to use them and where to place your hands. Once you stand on the treadmill, you can see the foot plate there. You place your foot onto the foot plate and then stand onto the mill. Once Ashley starts walking, the belt will automatically follow what she's doing. And on the right hand side here, you see a handle. This is how much resistance is on there when you're walking with the mill. Number one is the lightest resistance. Number six is the hardest resistance, depending on what your purpose is, whether you want to get into a light jog, a heavy jog. You can also use this as a sled. So if we put this on number six, Ashley could place her hands there and she could start imagining that she's doing a sled run, which you see a lot in outdoor activities and again in CrossFit. But let's just move on to now is if she's going to just walk freely and maybe just get into a slight jog. So we'll put to level three and then we'll press the start button. Now it is starting to display a lot of information on the screen how many calories she's burned, what level we're on, and the pace of what she's walking. So if Ashley was to walk a little bit faster now, you would see how that pace really started to pick up. Again, once you finish this machine, she will just slow her legs down. Now, if you were in a run and you do need to stop this machine because you can't carry on at that pace, simply put your weight through your hands and spread your feet either side, like Ashley's just demonstrated. Once you're done, press the stop button twice, as with all machines and disembark the machine safely. This machine is by the same company who make one of the world's best row machine, Concept 2. It's a ski erg and it replicates a ski in motion. There's lots of things you can do with this machine and it's a fantastic piece of equipment. This machine is quite rare in independent gyms and it's quite hard to find one. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna demonstrate how to use this machine and what the features of it are. You find two handles placed at the top of the machine which you place in your hands. As you can see, there is a slight curvature on the right hand side and that is where the palm of your hand will go. Once you grip the machine tightly, you can start the workout. We'll get Ashley to do so now. So Ashley's now gonna place her hands onto the handles and she's gonna step back. It's a simple skiing motion and we recommend you put a slight bend into your legs 
and take a full extension on the arms and pull it as Ashley's demonstrating now. Again, it's fan operated, so there's no power to this, it's self powered. But we do have a device which allows you to make it harder or easier. And you'll simply turn that from one to 10. Doing so will make the machine harder and easier. And again, on the PM5 monitor, it will display how hard Ashley's working, how much power she's putting through, and how fast she's traveled. Once you're finished on this machine, simply replace the handles back to where you found them and rest. This is a great piece of equipment, again, for a hit workout. And what you could do is a little bit of a mini circuit where you go from the air bike to the ski erg, followed by the curved treadmill. It's a great cardio workout. Now moving on to the to the major parts of the leg muscles. We're gonna go onto the hamstring. This is a seated leg curl. Again, it's made by Nautilus. It's a new piece of equipment that we've just added to the gym. And it's a great piece that will really target the hamstrings. I'm gonna use Ashley again now to demonstrate how to use this. There's various places for you to set the seat and Ashley will now show you how to. So first thing she'll do is take a seat onto the pad. Once she's took the seat on the pad, she will then feel that the back pad's in the right position. And to do so, she'll place her feet around there ensuring that just the curvature in the heel is in position. Once she's done that, she's set it onto small. Ashley is only quite short. You've got medium and large there as well, but Ashley's needs to be in a small position. She's now gonna press that button down and she's gonna lock that into her shins. As you can see now, it's created a point between a calf, ankle, and a shin. Now what she's gonna do is she's gonna take the seat belt, which is located on the left and right of where the hips are, and she will now pull it up is if you were on a ride, which will relieve the tension. So you simply just pull. Once she's got that there, she'll lock it in and she'll pull the belt tight. She's in position now. It's paramount that you put that seat belt on because that does keep you locked in. Because when you are gonna choose the weight, the weight will try and pull you up from the seat. So please use the seat belt provided. She's chose a weight, she'll grab hold of the handles tightly now. And the process of using this machine is she'll imagine that she's tucking a heel into a bum. So she's gonna pull that machine down forcing through the calves and the heels to create a squeeze point and this really develops the hamstring and she'll safely go up, not quite touching the plates together when she goes but she'll make sure that she gets a full contraction and a full stretch on the exercise. Once she's finished the exercise she'll simply extend the legs fully, she'll press the button in which will relieve the tension from her shins and then she'll press the red lever on the seat belt which will mean now that you can disembark the machine safely. Another piece of equipment which targets the hamstrings. Very similar to the seated leg curl, except you're lying face down on this machine. This is probably the ultimate piece of equipment for the hamstrings. It's my personal favorite. It's something that I love to use. And we're gonna use this in a dual format. So we're gonna use it with both legs. You can use it independently, using it one leg at a time. We're gonna show you how to use it with two legs. Again, various ways to adjust this. And again, we've got a small, medium and large section on here. So you'll pull the yellow lever out and select from large, medium and small. As I said, Ashley's only five foot six, so she's gonna be on the small section. Then she's gonna choose a weight. So we're gonna to go to around about 16 kilos. What she's gonna do then, is she's gonna to go to the machine and lie face down. Once she's lied face down, there's handles at the front of the machine, which she'll grab hold of firmly. And as you can see, this pad what rolls, as she lifts her heel up to try and touch her glutes, she'll hold it there for a split second, and she'll fully extend all the way down, which is creating a stretch. And now she's gonna pull it back up again to create a contraction. And it's a simple process of extending your legs and contracting the glutes. When you're doing that, you're trying to focus your mind on the muscle that you're working. Always try and use a mind to muscle connection. Again, driving it through the glutes into the feet to ensure a full stretch. Once she's finished, she'll simply fully extend the legs let it go down, she'll slide backwards off there, place her feet on the floor and disembark the machine. Now on to the next piece of equipment on legs. This is a great way to activate your quads. So anybody wants to come in the gym and really have a leg workout which doesn't maximize the glutes and activates the quads, the leg extension is probably the ultimate piece of equipment. I'm gonna show you now how to use this machine, how to extend your legs and how to get a contraction onto your quads. Ashley now will sit down on the machine. On this one, you've got a little knob that you turn. You simply hold the rotating pad there, 
undo the tension off that and take it down to where suits you. We're gonna use it about number two for Ashley. Once you've set that, you'll simply place your feet behind the roller pad and make sure that your feet are located just in the curvature between your foot and your shin. What we've got then is a back pad. And again, you'll pull that lever out and that'll slide backwards or forwards. That should be about the right position for Ashley. And once she's done that, she'll choose her weight. So for the purpose of the video, we'll use about 28 kilos. Once she's all set, she'll grab a firm grip of the handles. You've got various ways to target different areas of your quads and you simply have to invert your feet or move your foot position. We're gonna slightly point Ashley's toes out over, ensuring the gap between her kneecaps and her feet are about the same. Once she's set there, she'll simply try and put a toe to the ceiling by extending the legs. As you can see now, that creates a tension point into the quads and really get the blood there. She'll do that, she'll hold it for a split second, take four seconds to go down, and she'll kick it up on about two seconds. So four seconds down, and remember, she's breathing all the air out when she's contracting the muscle. She'll try and do that for around about 12 reps. Again, depending on what program you're working to, for me, I would always recommend pre-activating the quads when you're starting a leg workout if your main focus is to target quads during that leg session. Once she's finished, she'll simply go all the way back to the plates, hit each other, and again, she'll take her feet from behind the roller pad and step away from the machine. We've all heard of the squat. Squat's a great exercise, but sometimes it can be dangerous for people who are new to the game or really want to try and go heavy. The line leg press is a way to replicate the squat and do it safely. This machine has been in our gym for about three years and probably one of the most used pieces of equipment. It's a great way to target the leg muscles. I'm going to show you now how to use the machine safely, where to place your feet, where to push from and how to select the appropriate way for you. We'll get Ashley to sit on the machine. The first thing she'll do is just place her feet out of side while she chooses the appropriate weight. We're going to go on to about plate number six. Once she's placed the pin in, she will then lay down flat onto the back pad, placing the shoulders behind them pads there. The elbows will go on the side pads and the handles will be held with a firm grip with the hands. As you can see there, Ashley's placed her feet with her toes up to the top of the plate. She's not quite deep enough. So with the right hand, there's a lever. If she pulls the lever up, she can go into a squat position and she can go down to where she wants to be. That's a little bit too far. So we're gonna take her up to two notches just so her glutes are slightly below her knees, which creates the right depth onto a squat. So she's happy where she is there. She's now gonna drive, pushing the weight through the heels of her feet, and she's gonna go up. She'll never ever lock her legs out, okay? Guys, I need to reiterate, please never ever lock your legs. If you lock your legs and the weight pushes your kneecap down, you will snap your legs. Please, please, please use all our leg equipment safely. Never ever lock them kneecaps. I've seen so many videos of things go wrong. How do we use this machine then? So she'll take it down so the plates don't touch. So we'll get a continuous movement. She'll go up and she'll squeeze her quads, pushing through the heels of her feet. Then she'll go down on a controlled manner, just so her glutes are below her knees and she'll drive back up again, breathing out at the top, and in as she goes down, breathing out as she goes up. Each time she's contracting the quads. Remember, push through your heels of your feet, never lock your legs out and train safely. Once she's finished, she'll go all the way back down again. She'll pull the handle up so she can now sit up. She'll now sit up all the way and she'll leave the machine safely. One of the most famous pieces of equipment in any gym is a leg press. The Panata leg press is absolutely fantastic. The motion, the smoothness of the machine is absolutely brilliant and the position that you're in is second to none. This is a plate loaded machine, so you can choose from the various plates around the gym, starting from a 2.5 kilo up to 25 kilo, and you can load them up. Remember to train safely. Please don't overload the machine. Always read the instructions on the side telling you what the maximum weight limit is of a machine. We're gonna now show you how to use this safely. I'm gonna bring Lewis in to load plates on one side. I'll load the plates on the other side, and Ashley will demonstrate how to use the machine. We're using a 15 kilo plate. There's two different pegs on this. There's the middle peg and the top peg. We'll place it on the middle peg. Once it's pushed on the machine, the weight's on safely. This is where Ashley's bum will go, and this is where her back will go. So she'll step into the machine, holding onto the top as she goes in. Once she's in, she'll sit down and get herself in position. As with all leg equipment, you'll have various locations for your feet to go. The wider that you put your feet, the more you'll incorporate your glutes. We're gonna put it shoulder width apart, and feet just slightly pointing out over, placing 
a foot onto the pad and pushing the pressure through the heels of her feet. Once she's in position, she's ready to go. There's a handle on the left hand side. To get this machine into use, you simply have to just push it up. Once you push it up, it'll automatically remove the handle. The handle's removed, the weight's now all on Ashley. Please use it safely, as if you can't control this weight, it will push down on you. I'm gonna be here with Ashley, and I'm gonna show you now how to use it. She's gonna take it down, so her knees go into her chest, driving up through the heels of her feet. Again, never locking her legs, all right? Never go to that point of lock. Always just before squeezing and breathing. They're the two most important parts. Squeeze, breathe, in. She'll repeat this process till she can't do no more or till she's achieved her target rep range. And once she has, she'll simply extend the legs, again, not locking off. She'll place the handle back over and drop it down. Once that's that, the machine's locked in place, she can safely remove herself from the machine. Once you're finished with any plate loading machine, please make sure you wipe down the plates and the machine and replace the weight safely to the racks. Please guys, I must stress how important it is to put the weights back where you found them. And if you didn't find them in the rack, put them back in the rack. The dreaded hack squat. This really is the ultimate piece of equipment to test people. I definitely recommend anybody who thinks they're really strong legs to have a go at this machine. It's an absolute animal. Most people don't need to put any extra weight on this machine. It's already heavy enough as it is as a stack. Please make sure you've got somebody there if you use this machine, because if you do squat down, it's very hard to get back up again. I'm gonna show you now how to use this machine safely. And again, I'm gonna bring Lewis in as if we were gonna put weights on each side of the machine and show you how to do it safely. The weight racks are located at either side of the machine. If you do want to add extra weight to it, simply take your plate and put it onto the peg. We're not going to for this exercise. This is heavy enough. What we'll do now is we'll get Ashley to use the machine with no weight and show you how to use it safely and correctly. Ashley, place your feet onto the checker plate. Her back will go against that pad and her shoulders will sit nicely in there. Once her head's locked tight to the back pad, her back is always placed firmly on there and these handles here are how you lock off and on deciding what foot position you're going to use will determine which part of the body and much muscle this is predominantly using we're going to use the shoulder width position for her feet which will try and target the quads as much as possible she'll simply stand up and she'll place them down over the lock and position i will explain in a second when we finish the exercise but now the weight is all on ashley remember guys we never lock our legs what she will do now is sit down and stand up there's little rubber stoppers there which stop this machine from causing any significant damage. So if Ashley was to have failed at the negative part of this exercise, she could simply remove herself from the machine and leave. That means that it couldn't crush her. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to show you how to go off this machine properly. So Ashley will now come back into the machine. She'll place herself back in position again and I'll help her up on the first one. So we'll get her back up to the starting position and she'll simply perform her reps as she would in any squat. She'll go down, she'll not quite touch the rubber stopper and go up and down again. The breathing is just as important as this machine as it is on the other one. Making sure that you're breathing as you go down and out as you go up, not locking her legs, boom, just below the knees, driving it up. Once she's done, that's how you lock this machine off. So she'll stand up now. And as you can see, these little pegs here depend on how tall you are. So for the taller user, you'll lock off at one of them. For Ashley, she's just going to go down ever so slightly and she's going to push that handle up. Once that handle's up, she'll continue to go down and that locks this in position. It's really important, guys, that you lock this machine off before you leave it. Make sure that you disembark correctly. It's a great piece of equipment and I'd recommend anybody who hasn't tried it to certainly have a go, but do it safely. If you're unsure, ask one of us for help. Legs are one of the biggest muscles on the human body and something which a lot of people skip in training. This machine's probably one of the most underrated machines in any gym environment. Generally, these machines are split into two. This is a dual machine, so it's an abductor and an adductor. In simple terms, it's inner thigh and outer thigh. What we're gonna do now is show you how to work this machine and how to go from one exercise size to the other. So we'll bring Ashley over now and as you can see these twist based on which part you are using. We're going to now go straight into the abductor. Ashley's going to sit down. There's a little lever on the right hand side. You're going to pull that up 
and she's going to close the legs as far as she can and push the lever down. Once she's pushed the lever down, it'll click into place. That now is set for her. She now needs to choose the weight which she wants to do. We'll just choose 20 pounds or nine kilos. And now what you do on this machine now is you simply open your legs as wide as you can and close your legs in a controlled manner. Never ever just let go of the machine. You always have to control the negative part of this exercise as with all exercises generally you do 12 reps to 15 reps on this and it gets harder on each rep what we'll do now is we'll now show you how to use the adductor version of this what you will do now is place the feet in the center and we will rotate them around you have to pull that lever up rotate them round, and what actually we'll do now is pull that back up again and the legs will go over the top and then she'll place her feet on the foot pedals provided, pull up the lever again, and she'll open as wide as her legs can go. That is as far as this machine will go out now when she's using it. What she has to do now is imagine she's squeezing her knees together. She squeezes her knees together and she holds it for a split second and slowly controls the negative part of this exercise. Again, she'll close it. And if you imagine you're doing a four second negative and a two second positive, so it's gonna take four seconds, and then two seconds to close it. Hold the squeeze, four seconds, and then two seconds, hold the squeeze. The next piece of equipment is fantastic, and it's brand new, and it's just actually been brought into development here in the UK over the past two or three years. Generally, this machine would be done with a bar, and you would see people placing the shoulders onto a bench, and glute drive, or hip thrusts, with a bar placed on the pelvis. This machine takes away any risk, and it gives you a great workout. I'm now going to demonstrate how you get on this machine and how you use it. What the first thing I she will do is she'll take a seat onto the pad provided on the floor. She will now place her feet onto the foot plate, which is adjustable for your height. Once she's done that, she will now place her shoulders onto that pad and lift her glutes up from the pad. She will now slide back ever so slightly and then she will find that that's the right position for her. So now she's done that, she can sit back down on the pad and she can take the seat belt cross it over and place it into the button provided and again we do have the pads if you do want to use it and it's simply a velcro strap on there which you place over the pad and close we won't use it for this video but you can the next thing we need to do is look at what weight she's going to lift these pegs here are where you place the weights we just can use a five kilo weight on this either side which will create 10 kilos there's a little red clip there which you put on and you safely lock that off which will stop that plate from moving and I'll repeat the process on the other side as well and now that we've put the weights on and the seat belts are on feet are in position we'll now start to develop this exercise I'd recommend you put your arms across your chest when you're performing this all you've got to do is take the weight off the seat push up into the air and you're driving through the heels of your feet and you're thrusting up and you're squeezing your glutes or your bum cheeks together at the top and slowly going down breathing is really important when you're performing any exercise this is no exception so as she's at the top she's going to get all the air out so she's going to breathe out there she's going to breathe in as she goes down and she's going to breathe out as she comes up each time she's going to squeeze her glutes together and really feel a burn on there Trust me girls, you will absolutely love this machine and lads, please don't feel you can use it. It's a great machine for them glutes. Once you're done, simply sit down and press the red lever on the seatbelt just as you would on a car, which will replace the seatbelt back to its start position. You remove your feet and stand up. That's if you can, because this does really give you a workout. Return your weight back to where you found them again and make sure you clean down the machine after use. The next piece of equipment is also for the glutes. It's called the glute kickback or a rear kickback. This machine's not long been in the gym, but it's a fantastic piece of equipment and you do each leg independently. So we're gonna show you now how to get into the machine safely and where you place your feet and your hands to use the machine effectively. You walk around and you place your feet in the middle of the machine. And you place your forearms onto the pads there. Once she's done so, she'll grab hold tight of the handles. And as you can see now, you've got a plate at the back. It's split into two, so we're gonna do the right leg first. There's a little bit of a curvature there, and I'd recommend putting your heel on the curve. When you do anything to do with glutes, you always try and push the weight through the heel of your foot. There's a peg where you'll choose the weight, and for this video, we'll use a five kilo. Again, once you've put that on there, make sure we use the little clip, which stops it from coming off. Now, Ashley's gonna take a firm grip of the handle. She's gonna get herself in position, and she's gonna get ready to kick her leg up to the sky. You'll try and get to about 10 reps on each leg, each time making sure that you drive back 
with as much power as you can, but in a controlled manner. Once she's done her 10 reps that she's set herself a target on this one for, she'll simply put her feet back down on the floor again, onto the pad in front of her, and she'll now place her left foot onto the machine, and she'll start to perform with the opposite leg. This is a great machine, and it really does incorporate the hamstring and the glute tie-in. Girls, you're gonna love this machine again, and lads, please don't feel like you can't use it. It's a great way just to target that glute ham tie-in. Guys, please don't let the name of this machine fool you. It's called the Sissy Squat, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of equipment which you can do without any weight, or you could simply place a weight onto your chest, and I'll show you how to do that now. You've got two different options on this machine, and what you've got to do is first set how far you want that to go through. I'm gonna get Ashley to step into the machine now where she'll place her, her feet onto the foot pad. Now that she's in the machine, we're making sure that she's got a tight fit between a shin and a calf on the back. Once we've set that, we simply lock that off, which will ensure that this won't fail. Once you've done that, what she will do then is she, she'll start to sit down and you've got to imagine there's a chair underneath you. She'll try and make sure that her shoulders stay just slightly behind her kneecaps and she'll drive that up each time. As you can see, she's taken a bum just below her knees to make sure that she wants to get a nice deep stretch on that. For the experienced user, someone wants to add a little bit more weight to that, you could take a plate and you'd hold it across your chest or above your head. And as you can see now, she'll perform the same exercise just with a plate. Depending on how hard you want to make this, depending on where you place the plate. Some people do choose to put it up in the sky as you go up and down like that. You could incorporate your shoulders with this exercise as well and almost do a squat press. So if she takes it down to her chest as she goes down and push it up to the sky as she goes up, that's added a whole new dimension to this machine which will create a squat press as well. I did say we've got some very rare pieces of equipment here at Mass Body Gym, none so much so as the Absolo. Now I personally sourced this machine um, after using it in Spain. Fantastic machine, it almost makes you feel like you're playing a game. Trust me, the next day it's not going to be any game, it's going to really feel the tension on your midsection. Settings again on this machine, if you sit down there you'll see a little lever where you will now pull the seat forwards or backwards depending on how tall you are and again you'll place your feet onto the foot plate and adjust the height of that to suit you are locked in firmly. We'll get Ashley to do so now and show you. As you can see, her feet need to go down a little bit, so we'll simply undo the tension and pull out. And now, what you will do now is force that down into position and then tighten it back up again. Once it's nice and tight, her feet are locked in, she'll now be able to see if she's in the right position. The back pad, as you see here, goes down with your body. So if Ashley now safely just goes down, she'll be able to feel if she's in the right position, if she feels she needs to move in. She'll pull the handle up and tuck her legs in. She's in a comfortable position. That leads me to the, to the slam balls where you've got here. As she comes up, she will take a grip of the ball. As she goes down, she'll place it onto her chest and then she'll come up and she'll aim for the target. Once she comes up, she'll then grab the next ball and again, aim for the target and she'll go down, repeat the process. Again, you can make this a little bit more difficult and to do so you place the ball behind your head. So she'll go down, she'll extend the ball behind her, not quite touching the floor, back into her chest and throw it. We'll demonstrate that one more time. Behind her head, up to her chest and throw it to the yellow target there. There's a little screen there which will display how many shots you've had. The record on this machine is around 250. There's a goal for you to try and beat. Again, once you're done, remove your feet from the foot plates and stand up safely. The next ab machine in here is the ab crunch. This is a fantastic machine. It's only just been brought into Mass Body Gym. It's made by Nautilus. Nautilus is an American brace company. We've got quite a few machines in here that are made by this company. They're a great piece of equipment. These are run by a Kevlar belt. The Kevlar belt mean that there's no rope system. It's a great motion and it keeps a continuous smooth motion as opposed to a, a conventional rope. I'm gonna show you now how to climb into this machine and how to set it up. First thing you see is the handle. To raise the seat, you don't need to touch the handle, you just need to pull the seat up. But to put the seat down, you should take the weight off the seat, pull the handle up and let the machine go down safely. Ashley will now show us how and where to put her feet. She'll first of all take a seat onto the pad and she'll go back. Now, 
Ashley needs to go up, so she needs to be on about number five. So she'll step off the machine, and we'll pull this up to number five. That should be about the right height for Ashley. Now what she'll do is she'll put her feet behind the pads there, and that locks her in position. Two pads, one either side, and one for your hands. Once you're in position, you've already chose your weight. We've put this on 23 kilos or 50 pounds. All she has to do now is pretend she's doing a sit up. By doing so, she's gonna imagine she's tucking her elbows into her kneecaps. So as she goes down, again, she'll breathe out. As she comes up, she'll breathe in. So now she'll squeeze down, pulling between her feet and her hands to create a pivot point. When she goes down over, she'll really crunch that midsection and breathe the all the air out. Again, you'll perform this exercise to your rep range. And once you're done, simply go back over, leave go of the handles, take your feet from behind the plate and stand up. Okay, this takes us on to Again, one of the biggest muscles in the human body, which is the back. This is a T-bar row. It's a machine which has been about for quite a long time. It's a fantastic piece of equipment. Ours is made by Nautilus. It's a plate loaded machine. And Lewis is now going to demonstrate how to use the machine safely. And we're going to talk you through where the handles are and how to load the machine with weights. We're going to use a 10 kilo plate on here. It simply places over the peg and goes down. This machine you don't need to put a locker on because it automatically gives you a gradient where this plate won't fall off. What Lewis is gonna do now, he's gonna take a grip of the handles and he's gonna find a position which is comfortable for him. And you can either put them in over, out over, or turn your hands so they're in a straight position. Remember guys, manual handling, make sure that when you do pick this machine up, you bend the knees to pick it up to start with. Please don't bend over from the back initially, you will do your back damage. You can use a belt on this machine which will add further support to your back, but Lewis isn't gonna, he's gonna, he's an advanced user and he'll show you how to use it properly. He'll basically stand up to start with, and what he's gonna do now is he's gonna perform the exercise to a safe manner. So he's gonna lean over and he's gonna pull it up and let it go down. As you can see, Lewis has got a slight bend in his knees and his glutes are slightly pointing back over. He's created almost a V taper there. And all he's gonna do is pull them handles up, hold the squeeze, and he's gonna concentrate on the center of his back. When you come up and pull up, focus on squeezing the center of your back, which is gonna maximize the amount of blood flow going to your back muscles. And then simply, once you finish using this machine, put back down using the correct manual handling techniques by bending out the knees. Place the handles back where you found them and then replace the weight back to the rack. The next machine that we're going to show you now, target and the back muscles, is the compound row, also known as a seated row. Some people will use a cable and they will put a V bar on that. This is a specific machine which is being developed to target the back. Lewis is now going to take his seat onto the pad and he's going to place his feet onto the foot plate. We're going to choose the weight for Lewis and again, we'll use about 36 kilos which is a nice comfortable weight for him. He'll get, take a firm grip of the handles, which rotate, as you can see, okay? What Lewis is gonna do now, is he's gonna start with a slight bend in his knees, and he's always gonna keep that there. What he's gonna do now is just initially straighten his legs a little bit, just to take the pressure. Once he's got that, he's simply gonna lean forward from his back, he's gonna lean back, and it's only gonna be a slight movement, but once he leans forward, he'll lean back, which initiates the back muscle, rather than taking over from the bicep, and then he'll pull in. Imagine there's a piece of string on his elbows, which will force his hands to come back. Again, targeting the center of the back, make sure you squeeze there. So you are slightly moving this. The wrong way to use this machine is what you'll see a lot of people doing, which means that they lean really far forward, keeping their arms locked. They'll keep their arms locked, and you see some people going like that. That's the wrong way to use the machine. The correct way to use it is just a slight motion, as you can see. He'll hit my hand and pull his elbows back. He'll leave my hand and pull back. As you can see, that's the correct way to use this machine. Once you're finished, simply lean forward, let go of the handles, and remove yourself from the machine. The lat pull down, this is a back machine which most people have used in the gym. There's various different attachments which will target different parts of the back. We have the V-bar and we have the wide straight bar as well as an abundance of other attachments there. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna use the straight bar. The first thing you're gonna do is locate the straight bar onto the clip and ensure that that's locked off. That bar now is safely on there. Then we've got various different ways to adjust this machine, but first of all, we're gonna choose the weight. So we're gonna put Lewis on the 28 kilos. He's then gonna take a seat onto the pad. What he has to make sure is that his knees are firmly locked below these roller pads. 
there's a little lever at the front of this machine which you simply pull out which lifts that up and down once we push that down and it's touching Lewis's knees leave go ensuring that that's locked in place he'll put his feet forward now and he's ready to go he's now going to take a firm grip and people have the perception that the wider you go with this the better it is we want you to find a natural position just more than shoulder width apart so Lewis will now take a wide position okay now we'll fully extend his arms. I'm gonna first show you and demonstrate how not to use this machine. The way you don't use this machine is by leaning all the way back and doing that. That is not how you use this machine, okay? That is wrong. And what you find is a lot of people put too much weight on there and have to do that to be able to pull that down. Lewis should only initiate the back muscle by creating a slight difference. Once he's created that slight difference there and leaning back ever so slightly, he'll now pull that in to the top of his chest. As you can see, his elbows are pulling down. He'll now extend his elbows up over fully and he'll slightly move forward and then he'll slightly come back again and then pull his elbows down. So it's a simple motion of about a 10% movement on his back from straight to leaning back and it's just a way to engage the muscles on the back. Again, making sure that you're imagining there's a piece of string on the elbows which are pulling them down onto the top of your chest. Once you're finished, simply extend your arms, stand up and leave the machine as you are, removing the bar and placing it back where you found it. Triceps. Triceps are actually a bigger muscle than the biceps. So the triceps split into three. It's the back of the arm. Girls, you know it as bingo wings. Lads, we know it as the tricep. People don't really train the triceps as much as they should and they try and target biceps a lot. A great way to make the arms slightly bigger is to train your triceps and girls. If you want to tone up the backs of them arms, this is a great way to do so. This is a tricep extension. There's various ways you can train your triceps using different pieces of equipment. This one's independently made to target that specific area. So what you've got in here now is you've got a position of the back pad and you've got a position of the seat. Lewis is going to demonstrate this one and Lewis is only around about five foot six as well so he's got to make sure that this is in the right position for him so we're going to now bring Lewis in and we're going to go on a 30 kilo weight stack for Lewis so we've already selected his weight he's now going to sit down and what we need to do now is we need to lock him into position there as you can see if he was to be in that position he's too far back so you need to lean forward ever so slightly and we'll put that on to number four now what Lewis can do now is place his elbows and his forearms onto the pads provided there. I'm probably gonna push that forward one more time for Lewis there. He's locked in nice and tight. Now all he's got to do is extend his arms. So he's got to drive that down, which is now gonna target his tricep. He's gonna come up in a controlled manner and that's stretching the tricep. He's gonna hold it at that position and he's gonna drive it down, which is gonna contract the tricep. So it's just a simple motion of contracting and extending, that is it up and down squeezing as he goes down on the negative side he's controlling it so he's really feeling the stretch coming on his tricep again once you've performed this you'll make sure that you go to around about 12 to 15 reps depending on what your target is some people go more some people go less for Lewis he's finishing on 10 so he's got one more rep in there and once he goes down at the bottom he's breathing out and he's breathing in as he comes up remember breathing is really important but he's going to come all the way up he's going to let go of the handles and I can now safely remove Lewis from that machine. The next piece of equipment is a dual machine again. This is tricep or chest dips. I'm gonna show you now how to use this for triceps. Again, as we've just said, this is for the back part of the arm. The tricep or girls use it as bingo wings. To get this machine to activate your triceps, you simply have to move the handles out over his chest, in over his triceps. Again, on this machine, there's a little lever on there left hand side which you pull out and then it raises the seat or lowers the seat because Lewis is only quite short he'll have a seat higher for you taller people he'll probably have a seat lower what we're going to do is we're going to go on to 28 kilos a great way to choose the weight on tricep dips is to roughly half your body weight if you're 100 kilos aim for around about 50 as you get stronger you will be able to increase that weight so you start dipping to your own body weight but we're going to go on at 28 kilos the seat belt there which we're going to wrap around Lewis as well and we're now going to show you how to use this machine safely Lewis will climb aboard the machine and again to make this bigger simply pull to make it tighter pull the extending piece 
they clip that in, he'll lock himself in nice and tight, he's now in. Now what he's got to do is place his hands onto the handles, and as you can see now, he's in quite a, a funny position. This is actually the correct position, and what he's going to do is he's going to drive down through the palms of his hands, squeezing them triceps at the bottom. He's then going to break from the elbow, come up feeling the stretch, not too far, he's only going to come up around about 70% of the full distance that this machine travels, and he's going to place it back down again. So that's contracting, and this is stretching. He's going to do 10 reps, so he's got another four to go after this one. One, two, remember breathing is really important. Four second negative, two second positive, breathe out. Breathe in as you come up, and breathe out as you go down. Again, four second negative and a two second positive. It's almost an explosion on the positive part of the workout. Once he's finished, he'll fully extend his arms, remove himself, unclip the safety belt, and stand up and leave the machine. The next piece of equipment in the tricep series of Mass Body is the single or double tricep extension. This machine again is made by Nautilus. It's a pin loaded, so you don't need to put any plates on there. You simply choose your weight. Again, you set your seat height. I'm gonna set it up for Lewis now. I know what height he is. I can set his machine up for him. Lewis is around five foot six. So Lewis will want the machine slightly higher than the taller guy. So we're gonna set it there. That's on level number 11 for Lewis. And again, this back pad can be placed forwards or backwards, depending on how tall you are. The tricep or the back of your arm has to be located on that pad there. What we'll do is we'll get Lewis to get into the machine now and we'll get it set up just right for him. We're gonna use about 23 kilos on this plate and then we can get going. So Lewis is gonna take his seat on there. It's quite a difficult machine to get into at first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it singly. As you can see, Lewis's elbow is a little bit too far back. So what we need to do is we need to bring him forward. By bringing him forward, it'll bring his elbow forward. So we're gonna bring this and we're gonna take him to about number six. What that'll do now is he'll be able to keep that against there. Taking hold of this handle behind him. And now what he has to do is imagine he's driving that up like that. And as you can see, it's quite a difficult machine to use. It's a great way to target your tricep and isolate your tricep. There's absolutely no other muscle that you can use to do this machine. So it's a great way to either pre-activate or solely target the tricep muscle. Once you've done it all on your right arm, you will then do the same principle with your left arm. So to do that, what he'll do is he'll first place his tricep on there and he'll grab hold of the handle behind him. If you're doing single arm and you do struggle to get in at first, he could take his other arm and he could just help himself up with it for the initial starting point. And again, he'll take it down, which is creating a stretch and he'll push it forward, which is creating the contraction. Remember guys, breathing is really important again. Okay, you've seen how we've done this with one arm and a single arm, we're now gonna do it with a double arm. What you'll do is you'll place both of the triceps onto the pads provided and bend your hands back to grab a firm grip of the handles. Once you do that, you'll simply drive them forward and now Lewis will now show you how to use this machine. Push them forward, contracting the tricep, taking the negative, controlling it, and driving it forward again. Again, fantastic machine. You can use single, which is independent, or you can use dual, which is both hands together. Again, fantastic machine, guys, for triceps. The next piece of equipment in our arm range at Mass Body is the bicep curl. It's a Nautilus machine, again, which you'll have seen throughout the gym. Fantastic equipment, really smooth motion, but really helps you get the contraction on the muscle. We set the seat both front and back, so we're gonna set it for Lewis now. As I said before, it wants to be a little bit higher because Lewis is quite short, and we're gonna bring that to around about number three. Once we've set that, Lewis will take his seat on there, and he'll choose the weight which is according to him. For the purpose of the video, we'll go nice and light so we can get a good contraction on the muscle. We're gonna start by using this machine singly, and we'll start with Lewis's right arm. So he'll place the back of his arm on there, and he will extend that so you can get a firm grip. What you'll find with this is you have to try and pull the palm of your hand into your face. Once you're doing so, your left arm, while you're using it with your right, can be placed on there 
to make sure that you are staying in position and you're going to curl it up and you're going to really squeeze the bicep you're almost going to imagine that there's a ball inside the elbow which you're trying to squash and once you squash that if you look the way this is they also squash that which contracts his bicep again taking it down getting an extension on the bicep then a contraction again guys i must stress breathing is really important once he's done it with his right arm he'll put it down and he'll now repeat the process with his left arm He'll do the same rep range left to right. So if he's done 10 on his right, he'll do 10 on his left. Now I'm gonna show you now how to use this as a dual machine or a double where you do both arms at once. Same principle, the only thing is, is you've got to bring both of your hands in to try and create the tension on your biceps. Lewis will now demonstrate that. Big squeeze, holding it tight, extending. You have to make sure you're in synchronization with each other, making sure you're pulling evenly through the left and right arm, which will create a good tension on the biceps making sure you get a stretch and a contraction once you finish that machine simply let go of the handles and leave the machine this moves us on to the arm curl very similar to the bicep curl which you've just seen apart from this is a fixed position for two arms together weight stack so there's no plates needed you simply put the pin in at the way that you want to choose so we're going to go on to 15 kilos for lewis then we've got to adjust the seat it's on the right hand side of this machine you pull the pin out and raise or lower the seat to where you want it again we'll have it near the top for lewis and he'll then sit down on the machine once he's sat down on the machine he'll place the back of his arm triceps onto the pad and then he will grab hold of the handles underneath as you can see they're taking a hundred hand grip what he'll do now is he'll try and pull the palm of his hand up to his face making sure he imagines there's a tennis ball in there that he's trying to pop making sure he puts a tension under now the worst thing you can do in this machine is by coming back too far because once you come back too far there's no tension onto your bicep and all the weight is onto your shoulders and your elbows so make sure you don't go all the way with that machine and you leave it to imagine there's a tennis ball in there and that's as far as you squeeze by contracting your bicep at that point full extension down coming up imagine the tennis balls there but squeezing don't lose the contraction on your bicep all the way down come up breathe out go down breathe in come up breathe out go down and breathe in that's how you do that machine this takes us on to the shoulder section this is a fantastic piece of equipment it's made by hammer strength one of the best pieces of equipment that money can buy this is a plate loaded machine so you have to choose the weight from the plates which are located around various stations in the gym we're going to use a 10 kilo either side simply pull it off the location peg and place it onto the weight peg and do the same on the other side make sure the weights are even please don't put 15 on one side and 10 on the other because you will know about it 10 kilos are placed on each side now what we've got to do is select the height of the seat again as i've said previously lewis is quite short so you'll simply pull that machine up and we'll put it on level three for lewis what this machine is going to do he's going to sit down on there he's going to place his back against there and grab all this from underneath the handles i'll bring lewis in now to demonstrate it's a little bit easier to explain he sat down and now his back's against the machine he'll bring his head back and he'll place his hands underneath on the handles what he's going to do now is try and push this backwards a lot of people think this machine you've got to push it forwards that's wrong you push it backwards so what he's going to do is try and raise his hands up to meet mine okay brilliant so that's his extension point he's never going to go to lock out he's going to put a slight bend in there that's where he's going to go up and down to now so he's going to take it down below his ears breathing in and coming up and breathing out at the extension He'll repeat that process if he set a rep range of 10 once he gets to 10 he'll stop but now as you can see he's taking a four second negative and a two second positive taking it down each time just below his ears and back up again just before the point of locking out on his elbows once he's finished he'll simply lower the machine down all the way and disembark from the machine the lateral raise machine this is another shoulder machine it's a fantastic piece of equipment a lot of people use this machine to pre-activate the shoulders so it's generally the first machine that we'll use you don't have to go too heavy on this machine it's simply a motion rather than a lift so i'm going to show you now how to use the machine safely there's a little handle on the right hand side of the seat where you can lift the machine up and down again 
we'll use it to lose his height. That's set there, and you now place the little yellow pin into the stack where you want it. And again, we'll go on 16 kilos for Lewis. We'll sit him down, his back will go against there, and his elbows will bend against there. So as his back, as you can see, his elbows are located against the pads, he'll bring his hands up level. Once he grabs all of the handles provided, he'll now, he won't push from his hands, he'll push from his elbows, and he'll try and raise his elbows up just above his shoulder height to there. He'll go down on four seconds, and he'll go up again and create a tension in the squeeze point just above shoulder height, and back down again, and he'll repeat that process till he gets to the desired rep range. Making sure that when you get to the top, you're creating a squeeze, a slight pause at the top, and go down and get into the motion of going up and down. Again, you can choose the weight what's according to you. You don't have to go too heavy with this machine. Once you're finished, simply leave go of the handles and step away from the machine. This takes us to the shoulder press. This is another great piece of equipment. It's very similar to the shoulder press that you've seen earlier on with a hammer strength, apart from this is pin loaded and you're in a slightly different position. So on this one, there's no plates. You just simply have to put the pin in to the weight that you desire. We'll put it in to 21 kilos for Lewis. And again, you raise the height up and down by pulling out the lever and lifting the seat up and down. Wheel set up for Lewis. Remember, the shorter you are, the higher the seat will be, the taller you are, the lower the seat will be down. So Lewis will now climb onto the machine and show you how to use it. Two different hand positions on this. You can have the general hand position, which is an outer grip, or you can have an inner grip, which is there. It's whatever's more comfortable for you. Generally, if you go on an outer grip, it'll create a bit more tension onto your shoulders. So we're gonna go on an outer grip for this exercise. And what Lewis is gonna do is he's gonna rotate his elbows underneath and he's gonna drive his hands up to the sky. He's gonna put the weight through the feet and transfer it through his shoulders. He'll drop his elbows down, just below his ears, and back up again, just before the point of lockout. And if you watch his facial expressions, as Lewis goes in, he's taking his breath in. As he's pushing up, he's taking his breath out. Again, guys, I can't stress enough how important it is to have the correct breathing. Once you're finished, simply leave go of the machine, let the weights touch each other, you're locked off, you can stand up. This is another dual machine. It's the rear chest fly machine. First of all, I'm gonna show you how you use this to target your rear delts, which is the rear part of your shoulder. Little red levers on the top of this machine, simply pull that down and close it as far together as you can, making sure that both sides are equal and you've got the same pinpoint. As you can see now, they're equal. We've set the weight on 18 kilos for Lewis. You can adjust the height of the seat, simply by pushing that lever in and letting it go down or up. Again, we need it a little bit higher for Lewis, just because of his height. And what he's gonna to do to target his rear delts, is he's gonna sit down, but he's gonna face forward. He's now sat down on the machine, his chest is firm against the pad in front of him, and he's now gonna grab hold of the inner handle. And what he's gonna do now, is he's gonna open his arms up, almost like a barrel. Imagine you've got a barrel inside your arms, and you're opening the barrel up, and you're letting the barrel close. He's gonna open the barrel, squeezing through the center of his back, which is targeting his rear delts, and he's gonna close his arms, or close the barrel, all the way through, and bring it back out again. Again, two seconds, and then as we go, we'll count together and go, so he'll go back to the start position. Two seconds on the positive, and four seconds on the negative, so we'll count with him now. One, two, three, four, then two with a slight squeeze. One, two, three, four, one, two, slight squeeze. It's really important that you get the timings right in this machine, making sure that you choose the weight what's appropriate, try not to go too heavy, and focusing on that squeeze point on the center of your back, which will help the rear delts. The chest fly, predominantly years ago, people used to use a dumbbell and create a fly motion. This machine puts you in a perfect position and helps you really target and shape the pectorals or the chest. What we've got to do is choose the right location. Depending on how far you want the stretch or how deep you want the stretch will determine which lever you pick. We're going to go with just a slight stretch past. We're going to go with just a slight stretch on the chest here. So we're going to go in the fourth hole once we've gone in the fourth hole, both sides are even. We've selected the weight. I'll show you how to get this machine now in the right position for chest. He's gonna face forward, so his back's gonna be firm against the back pad. His feet are gonna firmly on the floor, and he's gonna grab hold of it from this handle here now. Once he's done that, he's gonna pull both hands in together. Again, like the barrel, 
Imagine there's a barrel inside there. We're gonna split the barrel in half. It's gonna take four seconds to get to the stretch point. He's gonna close the barrel in two seconds. That's the way that we use this machine. So it's four second negative and a two second positive. So you'll touch my hands, slight squeeze. One, two, three, four, two, one, and back again. One, two, three, four, and back again. One, two. Every time when he gets to here, he's really trying to force that together to really target the pectoral chest muscles, making sure that he gets a stretch, which he'll probably feel predominantly under his armpit with a full stretch, and close it again, and hold the squeeze, targeting the pectoral muscle. Once you're finished, simply return back to the starting position, leave go of the handles, and stand away from the machine. The next piece of equipment is a chest press. A lot of you will have seen over the years a bench press, which is predominantly an Olympic bar with weights either side, where you lay it on a bench and you push up to the sky. This is the same principle as that, apart from it puts you in the right position and allows you to use it safely, especially for the beginner. It's a safe way to target your chest muscles. To use this machine, you'll simply choose your weight, which is on this one, we're gonna use 28 kilos because Lewis is gonna demonstrate it. And then this is where your feet go. I'll show you now just how we set it up. This machine's already set to Lewis's height, but if you do need to adjust it, there's a little lever there which you pull out and lift the seat up and down. To activate this machine or to get it to work, you simply put your feet on the plate in front of you and push it forward. That'll bring the handles forward so you can get a grip. Once you've got a grip, your hands will take over from where your feet were. You'll simply leave go of the foot plate, place your feet on the floor, and then drive forward. With chest, what a lot of people do is put the elbows in the wrong position, which incorporates the shoulders. You want your elbows slightly lower than your hands. So as he goes back, his elbows will always stay slightly lower than his hands. What a lot of people do is put them up there like that. Put a lot of pressure on your front delt and make that take over from your chest. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna use the right position. So elbows just slightly below the hand. Imagine when you're coming back, there's a bar across there, and that bar's just gonna touch your chest before you pushes forward, he'll go back. If you look at the position of his elbows, they're perfect. He's pushing forward. When you get to the top where he is there, if you imagine you're trying to push your hands together, that will really, really squeeze the pectoral or chest muscles. You won't be able to move them handles, trust me. But if you do imagine that you're trying to push them forward, it will really target the pectoral muscles. Bring it back, all the way back, and then to leave go of this machine, push forward with your foot, then leave go completely and let the machine find its own level again. Once you're done, step off the machine and move on to the next one. I know we've already seen this machine when we've been doing tricep dips. The way we can activate our chest in this is to replicate the normal dip, which you've seen in videos over the years, especially used by bodybuilders. Dips are a great way to target the pectoral or chest muscles. To activate them or to target them, we simply rotate the handles out over. Now what you will do to activate the chest muscles with the difference between the tricep is slightly lean your back off the pad. Same principles apply. So I'm gonna get Lewis to stand in the machine now. He's gonna place the seat belt on him. The seat's already set, but remember there's a little lever there if you do need to raise the seat up or down. The taller you are, the further the seat will go down. The shorter you are, the higher it'll come up. As you can see, compared to the tricep, his hands are wider. What he's gonna do now is create a slight gap between the back of the pad and his back. It's almost as if he's gonna drive through the top of his chest. So as he pushes down through there now, he's gonna try and squeeze that part together. He's gonna to break up the elbows again, and he's gonna really drive that down and really imagine he's squeezing his hands together. By squeezing them together, he will get a great contraction onto his chest or pectoral muscles. Again, when he's fully extended and his muscles under contraction, he'll breathe out. As he's taking the negative part, he'll breathe in. The more you control your breathing, the better your form will be. If you get your form to be coinciding with your breathing, you will get the right technique. So again, it's a four second negative, breathing in, and then a two second positive breathing out. Four second negative, slight squeeze at the bottom for a slight second, back on a four second negative again. The next piece of equipment is the inclined chest press. Probably my favorite machine in the whole gym. I've used various variants of this machine and I've never found one which is quite as good. This is made by Techno Gym. It's fantastic motion, fantastic movement, and it's a plate loaded machine. We're gonna put 10 kilos either side now and I'm gonna show you how to use this machine properly. Make sure that you place your weight onto the pegs. Again, this machine, you don't need to use a pin to lock it. Because of the direction that the peg goes in, the weight can't fall off. So you don't need to use the safety pins on that one. Always make sure you put the same weights on either side. 
don't put a 10 and a 15. Again, you will know about it. it's independent, so your left arm pushes independently to your right arm. This machine, you simply have to pull the seat up from the front to get it in the right position. Once you sit on it, it's locked in position. First thing we'll do is grab all the handles, even distance apart, so make sure that you don't put one hand further up here and one hand there. Make sure they're even apart from the, from the handles. A good way to do that is to use your thumb as a guide. So if you put your thumb at the end and then wrap your thumb round, you know you're in the right position. Again, you're driving focus on the chest, not on the shoulders. He's gonna push it up, it's almost gonna to push to the sky. As he goes down, his elbow will stay below his arms. And push up again, boom, squeeze. As with all of our exercises, we try and go for a four second negative and a two second positive. So as you can see now, Lewis is really driving that forward. And again, if he envisions that he's pushing them handles together when he gets to the top, it's really gonna target his pecs. It's really gonna get the blood there. So we make sure that we use these machines to its maximum capacity, and not try and overload the machine with weight. There's no reason to put a whole load of weight on here. You can get a great workout with just 10 kilos a side and make sure that you're using it to its full capacity. Once you're finished, make sure you take the weights off and replace them back to the storage racks provided. Another one of the machines that I've sourced from around the country is the Nautilus chest press. This is fantastic. My favorite body part to train is chest and this machine is always part of my plan. There's two ways you can adjust this machine by bringing this back pad forwards and backwards and bringing the seat up and down. As Lewis is gonna demonstrate this, I'll set this up in the right position for him. I know what he needs to be. You find what's right for you, remember what it is, and you always can set your machine up before you start. We'll select the weight, and for this one, we'll do 23 kilos. Again, it's pin loaded, not plate loaded, so you don't have to worry about bringing a weight over. You just simply put the peg into the weight that you want. There's different ways you can target your chest on this machine by changing your hand position. Two variations, we're gonna use it on the top one which is a wide grip bench press. What he's gonna do is he's gonna push it forward and squeeze his chest. His head's gonna be back looking up to the ceiling, taking the negative part on a four second, breathing in and emphasizing the breathing out on the top. Remember guys, we don't lock our arms. We get just before the point of lockout and really emphasize the squeeze on our chest. It's really important that we emphasize that squeeze. We need to get as much blood to the chest as we can, making sure that we're maximizing the workout. Once you've finished using this machine, simply go backwards, the plates will touch, you can leave go of the handles and you can step away safely. The next machine I'm going to show you is a great piece of equipment which is called the Smith machine. We all know the Smiths who live next door and they can do everything. All right, the Smith machine is no different, that's why it's called that. You can do loads of different exercises on this machine. You can do a chest press, you can do a shoulder press, you can do a squat, various different things whether you use the bench in there or not. I'm gonna show you now the safety devices on this machine and just how you use them appropriately. If we were gonna do a chest press on this machine, we would simply pick this bar up and place it out of the way. There's little safety devices there. Depending on how tall, how big you are, will determine where you place them. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna demonstrate now how to use it. So as you can see, that lock off point there is slightly above my chest. So that's the right position for me. I'll put this to a position where I can grab it, and I'll show you now how we do this to do a chest press. Place the bench where you feel comfortable. Personally, I make sure that my bum goes in the crack of that seat, which is there. When you get in, be careful you don't bang your head on the bar. And again, place yourself on the bench like that. As you can see, that's just below my nipple line, and there's little grommets on this bar here where I place my middle fingers. I place them there, and to lock this machine off, I simply lift it up and rotate it backwards. And to lock this machine off, I rotate it forwards and let it go. What that does is that creates that to go into there and lock off. So to lock off, I go there, and to replace the machine, I go there. I'm now gonna demonstrate how to do a chest press. I'll simply place my middle finger onto the recess of the bar, lock off, and I'll take that down as far as I can and as you'll see, them safety devices come into play just before this touches my chest. So if I was to fail on this and I couldn't get the weight back up again, I wouldn't have to worry because I've put the safety devices there. And if I was to come down and you imagine I couldn't get it back up again, I wouldn't have to panic because this wasn't gonna squash me and I could simply climb to the left of the machine and escape safely. That way then there's no cause for injury or cause for concern. As I said, 
there's a lot of different exercises you can do on here. You can do squats, you can do shoulder press, you can do chest press, you can do tricep press. If we give you a plan, we might say tricep press on the Smith machine. That's the machine that you use. If you do need advice on how to perform the exercise, please come and ask us. We'll demonstrate it, abiding by social distance and making sure that you can see how that machine is used for that muscle and how to use it safely. This leads me to the DAP. The DAP is in abbreviation, a dual action pulley. Basically means that there's two separate stations either side, which allow you to perform exercises. These can be used independently or together. If you were gonna do a tricep push down, you would simply pull that up to the top. To do that, pull that lever out and just slide it. You then choose the appropriate attachment. And for this one, I'm gonna use the rope. All I'm gonna do is lock that into the clip. As you can see, that's safely on there now. That's safely there. I'll choose my weight now. What we would do now is we take our position in the DAP and perform our exercise properly. This is a tricep row push down. We'd simply push down and extend it out the back. All the way up and all the way back down again. That's one exercise that you can do on the DAP on a single. You could also take that down to the bottom and you could replace this attachment with a straight bar. Now what you could do with a straight bar is lock it back in again the same way as you did with the rope and you could perform a bicep curl where you stand back ever so slightly and again putting the tension on the bicep and creating that tennis ball shape size. So if you imagine I'm doing this double arm now, I'm making sure that there's a tennis ball in there. What you don't want to do is go up to that point. Yeah, so it's from there to there and back down again, fully extending and contracting. There's a lot of exercises you can do on this machine. Chest flies, tricep push downs, bicep curls, single arm tricep extensions. The list is endless. You can do kickbacks for the glutes, but there is a whole demonstration of different exercises that you can do on here. So for instance, I've just done the bicep curl, which is under the arm section. You can do any of them using the various attachments. The final thing to show you in this induction is the dumbbell section. Dumbbells have been part of gyms forever. Our dumbbells are made by Hammer Strength. The polyurethane and rubber, they're a fantastic addition to our gym. They look the part, they've got a nice grip on them, but you do have to be careful when you're replacing these back to the rack. What you don't want to do is get your fingers trapped under there. So please, when you're replacing these weights to the rack, make sure that you leave go before you squash your hands. Always return the weight safely. There's a lot of different exercises that you can do with a dumbbell. You can do a chest press, you can do a dumbbell row, you can do a shoulder press, you can do endless amounts of exercises and most of you will have some idea how to do them. If you are going to do something like a bicep curl, you would make sure that both dumbbells were the same weight, so they're both six kilos, you would stand in front of the mirror and you would just simply curl them up, making sure that you do the same amount of repetitions on each arm. Once you've finished, make sure, again, you replace the weight safely, making sure that you don't trap your fingers when you're replacing them. Please guys, always return the dumbbells back to the rack. Respect the equipment. We don't have a lot of rules here at Mass Body Gym. All we ask you to do is treat the equipment as if it was your own. Please don't abuse it. Please don't drop the dumbbells. We do have dumbbells up to 60 kilos. As well as the dumbbells, we have various fixed barbells, which are located at this side of the gym. These are all barbells. You do these double arm, and again, you can do various different exercises with them. Choose the weight that you want from 10 kilos all the way down to 45 kilos. Again, guys, please always make sure that we return them when you finish using them. Don't leave equipment laying about. Make sure you wipe it down after you've used it. As a member of the gym, you can go back and watch the tutorials that we've just showed you anytime. If you need any more advice or information, don't hesitate to contact one of us. We're now gonna go down and wipe down all the equipment that we've just used, wash our hands, sanitize, and get ready to go and train.